Hello and welcome to a very special episode of 7 Days of Science. Coming up this week, I plan to go fishing, Ben talks about his sleep schedule, 1 to 7 months, and I announce the release date for the next episode of our Walking with Dinosaurs review, 2024. Starting off the news this week is something I'm sure you've all heard about already. Earlier on in the week and after a delay last week because of the need for a software update, NASA flew its Ingenuity helicopter on Mars, which marks the first ever powered flight by an aircraft on another planet. This flight was just a test, and the eventual aim is to use Ingenuity to view Mars from angles that we have been previously unable to, as usually pictures from on Mars are taken from the surface, from rovers, and so Ingenuity will allow us to view the red planet from a much higher altitude. No time to waste, as NASA promises more flights of Ingenuity in the coming days. In other news, the UK government has accelerated plans to cut carbon emissions by planning to reduce emissions by 78% by 2035, after previously setting a target to be net zero in terms of carbon emissions by 2050. The new law will, for the first time, now cover international aviation and shipping. The ambitious target has naturally been met with both praise and scepticism, with various sources calling for action and not just promises. This comes as the UN Climate Change Conference that is due to be held in Glasgow near the end of the year is questioned, with many concerned over whether or not it will be able to have full attendance. And moving straight back to NASA this week, as they have announced that they have chosen the company SpaceX to provide the moon lander that will return astronauts to the moon later this decade. NASA plans to return to the moon in 2024, and throughout the planning process for this mission has looked to private companies to build various stages of equipment for this feat. The vehicle that will be used is based on SpaceX's Starship design, which they have been testing prototypes for for some time now. And now over to Ben, with some really interesting news about some things that have been in the news. Thanks Doug. Also in this week's news is a very interesting paper that has attempted to estimate how many individuals of Tyrannosaurus rex actually lived on Earth across the time in which they existed. Using a way of establishing how many individuals of a living species exist based on their body mass, the researchers calculated that at any one time about 20,000 adult T. rexes would have been living in North America, and that the species existed for about 127,000 generations, leading them to come up with a figure of 2.5 billion T. rexes that ever lived. Clearly, the error margins on this estimate are quite large though, which seems to be mostly from the density body mass relationship. But another very interesting part of this study is that it allowed the paleontologists to show that, based on how many fossils of T. rex are actually known, only about one fossil for every 80 million individuals that ever lived has been found. However, when looking at the section of the famous Hell Creek formation that has produced the most Tyrannosaurus fossils, the researchers found that we've probably discovered somewhere around the rate of 1 in 16,000 individuals that existed in that particular area. So some very intriguing reports and a pretty interesting thought experiment. And finally is an intriguing study that has investigated the migration habits of mosasaurs. Looking at the levels of oxygen isotopes in the tooth enamel of two different genera, Platycarpus and Clydastes, which lived at the same time but come from different deposits in North America, the paleontologists were able to reconstruct the life histories of these individuals over the span of one to seven months. What they found was that these animals, which include two adults and one juvenile, had records of semi-regular depletions in the oxygen isotope values of their enamel, which indicate travelling from marine environments to freshwater coastal ones every one to two weeks. The researchers, therefore, suggest that this regular consumption of fresh water indicates that mosasaurs actually had osmoregulatory functions similar to some of their living relatives, sea snakes that also sometimes drink fresh water. So a very fascinating study indeed. Back to Doug in the studio, and let's all wish him a very happy birthday today too. Thank you, Ben. Well, that's it for this week's 7 Days of Science. I do hope you enjoyed and have a safe week. We'll see you next Wednesday.